Good morning. Hi, friends. <laughs> what? I don't know, but I liked it. <laughs> I hope everyone had a wonderful spring break, even though I don't feel like it's spring outside. <laughs> the Lord Christ be with you. <clears throat> my name is Clark Waldrop. I'm one of the members here, and it's my honor to welcome each of you to Mayfield First. We're so glad that you joined us today. We also want to welcome our radio listeners on WYMC and everyone watching on Facebook. If you are watching through Facebook, you can let us know you're here in the comments section. And if you have a prayer request, you can post it in the comments as well. <clears throat> so, it's not there yet. There it is. We're trying something a little bit different today with our ongoing prayer list. As you can see, all the names are listed on the screens behind me. And we'll just take a moment to let everyone read over. <clears throat> and if you didn't happen to see all of them, please refer to our newsletter and the emails that come out. As always, please keep in mind the request and hold them in your prayers. We do want to specially pray for the family of Reverend Selby Coomer, who passed away last week. Shout outs. Stacy Covington. We hope you're doing well, and we send you our love, and we miss you dearly. Graves County ASAP, thank you to the ASAP program for its goal to promote a community free of alcohol, tobacco, and other drugs through partnering with schools, law enforcement, religious institutions, parents, youth, local governments, and other organizations. Katie Drain, thank you, Katie, for your dedication and hard work with the Wednesday Night Girls Group. The impact you're making in their lives is invaluable. And we're so grateful for everything that you do. <clears throat> women of Faith. Mr. Don Conley wanted to thank the Women of Faith for their kindness, compassion, and dedication to ministry. We want to thank them also for spreading God's love to others. <clears throat> I want to take this opportunity to remind you that worship is an active participation, not just a passive observation. Together we gather to pray, glorify, and give thanks to God through Jesus Christ for all the benefits and blessings of this life. Let us engage fully in this sacred act of worship. Our prayer to open is found in the bulletin or behind me. Please read along with me. Lord of resurrection surprises, open our hearts this day to the presence of Jesus Christ. Erase our excuses for unbelief and exchange them for strong witness to the power of your mercy and love. Give us courage and challenge us to walk the path of discipleship, knowing that Jesus goes before us, leading and guiding our steps. In his name we pray, amen. Good morning. Hope everyone's had a nice spring break. If you've had a break, uh, let's stand and stand sing our first hymn, The Day of Resurrection. Page. Easter people raise your voices. I'm glad someone warned me.
please join me in the prayer of illumination, which is again found in your bulletin or behind me. Almighty God, to you all hearts are open, all desires known, and from you no secrets are hidden. Cleanse the thoughts of our hearts by the inspiration of your Holy Spirit, that we may perfectly love you and worthily magnify your holy name through Christ our Lord. Amen. Our first scripture today is from 1 John chapter 1, verse 1, through chapter 2, verse 2. Did I do it right? <laughs> we declare to you what was from the beginning, what we have heard, what we have seen with our eyes, what we have looked at and touched with our hands concerning the word of life. This life was revealed, and we have seen it and testify to it, and declare to you the eternal life that was with the Father and was revealed to us. What we have seen and heard we also declare to you, so that you also may have fellowship with us. And truly our fellowship is with the Father and with his Son, Jesus Christ. We are writing these things so that our joy may be complete. This is the message we have heard from him and proclaim to you, that God is light and in him there is no darkness at all. If we say that we have fellowship with him while we are walking in darkness, we lie and do not do what is true. But if we walk in the light as he himself is in the light, we have fellowship with one another, and the blood of Jesus, his son, cleanses us from all sin. If we say that we have no sin, we deceive ourselves, and the truth is not in us. If we confess our sins, he who is faithful and just will forgive us our sins and cleanse us from all unrighteousness. If we say that we have not sinned, we make him a liar, and his word is not in us. My little children, I am writing these things to you so that you may not sin. But if anyone does sin, we have an advocate with the Father, Jesus Christ the righteous. And he is the atoning sacrifice for our sins, and not for ours only, but also for the sins of the whole world. The grass withers and the flower fades, but the word of the Lord endures forever. Good morning. Sorry, I'm sounding a little congested today. The pollen's gotten to me this week. I hope I'm not the, I think I'm not the only one. Buckley was a little snuffled too a little bit there. You may, I have one quick announcement for you. You may have noticed the pinwheels outside as you walked in. We have about 250 of these pinwheels that we are giving out to everybody. So please grab one as your way out. If you don't know, these pinwheels uh, honor and remind us of Child Abuse Awareness Month. April is Child Abuse Awareness Month, so we are honoring that and celebrating, or not celebrating, but raising awareness to all the harm that is around us. So as we can, just grab one of these, and it says, you know, preventchildabuse.org. So grab one and put it out in your garden or put it around your mailbox or at work, wherever you feel led to. <coughs> Grab more than one, we got a lot back there. So, today's a good day. As Easter people, we recognize that Christ is risen. Christ is risen indeed. So may we repre represent Christ in this world, in this kingdom here, as we go before Christ in prayer this day.
Lord, as your Easter people, we are thankful. Thankful for the knowing of the grace and love that you have given to us through your death and resurrection. <coughs> as we continue to represent and be filled with your grace here and given out, we see struggles. We see the frustrations and the harm and even the, the doubt. Sometimes that doubt may enter us. May you be present. May you continue your grace in those times of darkness. Lord, we are thankful. Thankful for the, for the love and grace that you bestow upon us each in our lives, for our church, our community, and for our world. Lord, we ask that you be with each of us. Be with those families that may be hurting. Maybe with those who are facing grief through loss. Be with those who are facing illness and burdens. Be with our world as it continues to struggle with war and strife and frustrations as we face each other. May your everlasting peace be with each of us through you. We thank you for each day we have. And as we live each day, may we share the peace of Christ as you call us to. And when we do struggle, and when we do doubt, may your peace and your faith in each of us and our lo your love show out so our faith in you may be ever stronger. And as our faith is stronger, we remember the prayer as you taught us to pray by saying, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not to temptation, but deliver us from evil. For I is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory forever. and sing, Oh, How I Love Jesus. As we go to this time of giving our tithes and offerings, I'll remind you that the uh, uh, get boxes, offering boxes are in the front and in the back. You're welcome to give before or after service and uh, by mailing it and on PayPal as well. Let's go to God in prayer. Lord, we thank you for the gifts you bestow us, both physical and spiritual. As we give of ourselves to this world and the kingdom here, May we continue your love 
each day. In your name, amen. Here it is gospel lesson from the book of John, chapter 20, verses 19 through 31. When it was evening on that, first, on that day, the first day of the week, and the doors were locked where the disciples were. For fear of the Jews, Jesus came and stood among them and said, Peace be with you. After he said this, he showed them his hands and his side. Then the disciples rejoiced when they saw the Lord. Jesus said to them again, Peace be with you. As the Father has sent me, so I send you. When he said, had said this, he breathed on them and said to them, Receive the Holy Spirit. If you forgive the sins of any, they are forgiven to them. If you retain the sins of any, they are retained. But Thomas, who was called the twin, one of the twelve, was not with them when Jesus came. So the other disciples told them, We have seen the Lord. But he said to them, Unless I see the mark of the nails in his hands and put my finger in the mark of the nails and in, in my hand in his side, I will not believe. A week later, his disciples were there again in the house, and Thomas was with them. Although the doors were shut, Jesus came and stood among them and said, Peace be with you. Then he said to Thomas, Put your finger here and see my hands. Reach out your hand and put in my side. Do not doubt, but believe. Thomas answered him, my Lord and my God. Jesus said to him, Have you believed because you have seen me? Because are those who are not seen yet have not have come to believe? Now Jesus did many things and other signs in the presence of his disciples that are not written in this book. But these are written so that many continue to believe that Jesus is the Messiah, the Son of God and that through me believing you may have life in his name. This is the word of God for people of God. Thanks be to God. You may be seated. Where's your proof? Where's your proof? So in John Irving's novel, A Prayer for Owen Meany, the narrator John has several conversations with Owen about the meaning of belief. In one of the scenes at the schoolyard, Owen illustrates his faith in God by pointing to a gray granite statue of Mary Magdalene. And as twilight falls, he can't see the statue anymore. It becomes so dark, it's, no, it's not even visible to anybody. Owen asked John if you knows that the statue is still there. John says, of course, he knows the statue is there. But Owen keeps pushing him. You have no doubt she's there? He nagged at him. Of course, I have no doubt. But you can't see her. You could be wrong. No, I'm not wrong. She's there. I know she's there. You absolutely know she's there? even though you can't see her? Yes, I screamed, John. Well, now you know how I feel about God. I can't see him, but I absolutely know he's there. This character of own meaning is an example of the kind of faith that we have as Easter people. 
that we share and to celebrate as Easter people on this second Sunday of Easter Tide. We hear the stories and the story of Christ risen in our scriptures, and we celebrate Christ risen in our life through his grace and love. We have that conviction and faith. He does only mean he didn't need to see. God, he stakes his life on the conviction. Owen stakes his life on that. He does not need to see the signs and wonders, but he orients his whole life towards that belief. But we see one person struggle today, and poor Thomas. We kind of always kind of villainize, not villainize, but kind of downplay Thomas a little bit too much. And I don't want us to harm Thomas too much, and I, but I want us to identify with Thomas today. In the scripture, we hear Peter, or Peter, Jesus coming to a group of disciples who were scared. They just saw their Savior, their teacher, their Messiah, crucified, and they had now been hiding in the upper room. They were scared, anxious, and nervous. They were anything but peaceful, weren't they? We hear that the disciples were in the house and the doors were locked. They were locked because of the fear they were facing. We can almost visualize them all huddled in a little corner in the room, debating what to do next, struggling, whispering to each other, Who's going to do this? Who's going to do that? Then Jesus appears to them and says, Peace be with you. This ought to be seen more than just a normal greeting. When Jesus comes, comes peace. I imagine that the disciples felt more than better once they saw that Jesus was there. Before them was not a ghost, nor a figment of their imagination, but the peace of Christ standing there. Before them was Jesus, and to be in the presence of Jesus Christ was a sense of peace that is, goes beyond understanding and our human understanding today. After greeting them and bringing them peace, Jesus breathed on them and sent them a challenge. He had sent them the presence of peace to go forth and to forgive as he has already forgiven. Now, having received verification, the disciples said, well, we hear that Thomas wasn't there. Thomas was not present at the time. They shared with Thomas, but Thomas didn't believe, did he? He said, I must see the mark of the hand, the nails in the hands and the mark and put my finger and put my hand in his side. He must have proof. I have to have proof that Jesus was here for me to believe. Thomas didn't, need, didn't want their evidence that they shared. He wanted his own evidence. Now, you know me, I like pulling some of the words and some of the scriptures apart. Now, the question I ran into this week was, what does it mean to doubt? What does it mean to doubt? Now, our traditional English understanding of doubt is defined as this, a feeling of uncertainty or a lack of conviction. We find ourselves living this term daily, don't we? I doubt I can survive this. I doubt I can make it through this week. I doubt I can make it through these struggles and this pain. And like my wife says oftentimes, I doubt my Adam will pick up his shoes and put them in the closet. As she shakes her head, yes, I can. We could say that Thomas was doubting all he was. He was doubting that Jesus was truly present with him that day. But if we look deeper at the text of doubt... We could look at the Greek translation of doubt. The root word of doubt is krino, 
and it means to pass judgment or to judge. Here in Thomas today, I don't see him being a judge, do you? Or passing judgment. So what is he doing? Look at the text. It says he was unbelieving. He was in a great state of unbelief. He couldn't see. When we look deeper, we see the Greek word of unbelief or belief is this, this, which means faith or trust. Thomas may have been lacking faith in what they were saying. He lacked trust in what they were saying. Thomas was struggling to see because he was in lost in his despair and pain of losing his one and loving leader, his teacher, his Messiah. But as Easter people, we know the story. We say, how could you have missed Thomas? How could you have missed Jesus was standing right there? But we as Easter people are on the other side of the cross and we can criticize Thomas but what about us? How many times may you been in pain, been in a place of darkness, and said, Jesus, God, where are you? I need something to show me you're there. Show me the proof. And as some may say, the proof is in the pudding. We need to see the proof, don't we? That God is there. In those dark times, we struggle. Thomas was struggling. Thomas was struggling in the deep darkness of frustrations and loss and pain and hurt. We begin to focus on our own wounds, don't we? When we see that. When we're in those times, we start to not see and we start to look inward our pain, and we just want that proof. Now, the question in those times is, what proof is, or do you need? What is that proof you need? Now, when I think of proof, I immediately go to my court time experience and those many hours of share, going through court cases when I worked for the state of Tennessee. And the evidence that you had to have in a court case was beyond a reasonable doubt. You had no doubt that there was, that this was your what you were going for was true. Now, this is what Thomas wanted. Thomas wasn't going to go off what they were saying, which is in the court terms, hearsay. Thomas wanted to hear exactly what, and wanted to see what they were saying. He wasn't going to take it. Now, the burden was on Christ, wasn't it? The burden was on Christ. But Thomas pushed that burden. Thomas struggled. Thomas wants that proof beyond a reasonable doubt. He wasn't going to take their word for it. And he was traumatized by that pain. What about us? What about us? Do we find that same self in us? Uh, with Thomas that we want that beyond a reasonable doubt even though you may hear from me or from your Bible studies or your Sunday school that the love of Christ is there in your darkness and your dark times and the risen Christ is there but you still want to see the proof it's hard to see the proof we have to be open don't we Peter did and we hear that Thomas, did Thomas even touch Jesus? We never hear that Jesus or that Thomas even touched and put his finger or touched his wounds. He just had to see. And then Jesus said, blessed are those ones who don't see. As we do. But we do see. We do experience through the Holy Spirit. We see the Holy Spirit working in and around us every day. But we have to be open for that. 
We have to be welcoming and receiving and loving to know that God is working, don't we? So as Easter people, our challenge is to say, don't show me the proof, but where is the proof? Where is God working in your life? Where is God forgiving you? I've had times where I have had said the same thing, where I have screamed at the, uh, the sky and said, God, why? Why? Show me you're here. Show me you're here working. Why am I in this place? Why am I in this upper room? Hiding. But then I turned around. I walked outside that day and I saw I needed to see God working. So I began to look for the evidence. I began to look for the proof and the relationships and the love that I had around me. So may you do the same as Easter people. Don't be burdened by proof, but by be burdened by the love of Christ each day. May you go forward with that knowledge that the love is there, waiting for you to see. In the name of the Father, and the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Another way we see and experience the love and the proof of Christ's love for us as Easter people is through our means of grace, our sacraments in our church. So as we go through the season up to the season of inter, or through Easter tide to Pentecost, this is an opportunity for us to lay ourselves down, to lay our burdens down. They experience Christ each day in the service, in each service through the means of grace in the holy table. Now I remind you that all here are welcome at this table. This table is not ours as the church. It's not the table of the United Methodist Church. It's the Christ Lord's table. And at the Lord's table, all who are welcome is everybody who are present here. So I'll remind you that as we go forward into the communion liturgy, recognize maybe where you've been burdened, where the proof is, and lay that down in this moment. Christ, our Lord, invites to his table all who love him, who earnestly repent of their sins, and seek to live in peace with one another. Therefore, let us confess our sin before God and one another. Merciful God. We have confessed that we have not loved you with our whole heart. We have failed to be an obedient church. We have not done your will. We have broken your law. We have rebelled against your love. And we have not loved our neighbors. And we have not heard the cry of the needy. Free of us, we pray. Free us from joyful obedience. Through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Hear the good news. Christ died for us while yet we were still sinners. That proves God's love for us, towards us. In the name of Jesus Christ, you are forgiven. In the name of Jesus Christ, you are forgiven. Glory to God. Amen. The Lord be with you. And also with you. Lift up your hearts. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right to give our thanks and praise. It is right and a good and joyful thing always and everywhere to give thanks to you, Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth. And then so with your people on earth and all the company of heaven, we praise your name and join in the unending hymn. 
holy, holy, holy Lord, God of power and might, heaven and earth are full of your glory, Hosanna in the highest. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord, Hosanna in the highest. Holy are you and blessed is your son, Jesus Christ, by the baptism of his suffering, death, and resurrection, you gave birth to your church, delivered us from slavery to sin and death, and made with us a new covenant by water and the Spirit. On the night in which he gave himself up for us, he took the bread, gave thanks to you, broke the bread, and gave his disciples and said, Take, eat, this is my body which is broken for you. Do this after you eat in remembrance of me. When the supper was over, he took the cup, gave thanks to you, gave the disciples, said, drink from this, all of you. This is the blood of the new covenant poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this after you drink in remembrance of me. And then so in remembrance of these, your mighty acts in Jesus Christ, we offer ourselves in praise and thanksgiving as a holy and living sacrifice in union with Christ's offering for us as we proclaim the mystery of faith. Christ has died. Christ is risen. Christ will come again. For I, your Holy Spirit on us gathered here and on these gifts of bread and wine. Make them be for us the body and blood of Christ, that we may be for the world the body of Christ, redeemed by his blood. By your Spirit, make us one with Christ, one with each other, and one in ministry to all the world until Christ comes in final victory and we feast at his heavenly banquet. Through your Son, Jesus Christ, and the Holy Spirit, and your Holy Church, all honor and glory is yours, Almighty Father, now and forever. Amen. Will our uh, communion servers now come forward? too much this time. <laughs> What to do? <laughs> the table is now set. Please come as you are led by the ushers. And also remember that the altar rail is open for prayer. If you feel you need prayer by me or with me, I'll be welcome to help pray with you as well. Come now as you are late.
Lord, we thank you for this holy mystery. As we have received of this gift, may we remember your grace and receive your grace this day and every day as you have showed us in this moment. In your name, amen. Please stand once again as we sing our last hymn, My Jesus, I Love Thee. Here it is, benediction. May you go forth with the knowledge of love of Christ is with you now and forever. Do not doubt. And do not doubt the proof is there in his name. Amen.